So welcome uh, to this lecture and we will discuss the theory of vibrometers. So we have discussed the, uh, that the vibration measurement is necessary to know the response of a structure or a system, any system. And those responses uh, could be represented, uh, those response can be represented in terms of uh, displacement response, velocity response, acceleration response. Uh, and based on these responses, the instruments uh, are named like if uh, we say displacement response, we call it vibrometer. So, we are going to discuss the theory of vibrometer. So, as we say that uh, this usually these vibration pickups, they are called the seismo, uh, seismic uh, instruments and they consist mass spring and damping elements. Now, suppose my I have some uh, structure that is vibrating. So, I have a structure here. So, this is my structure and this is vibrating. So, this is vibrating structure or surface. So, this is vibrating with certain, uh, we assume uh, for the simple analysis just one harmonics. So, uh, we assume that this is vibrating as y equal to y sin omega t. Now, I have to measure, uh, we do not know what is y sin omega t. We know that it is vibrating with certain harmonic uh, way, but we do not know capital Y, we do not know omega, right. So, we have to measure this Y and for this we as I said we use some uh, vibration pickup. So, we will apply this vibration pickups. So, vibration pickups, so let us, this is my instrument frame. So, this is the instrument. So, this is the frame and my vibration pickup contains a, a, this. So, it is a, a compact instrument including this frame and this frame is installed on this uh, vibrating surface. So, it is uh, rigidly fixed on this surface. So, it means that the frame is vibrating with the same vibration as this structure. And as I said, this seismic instrument or vibrometer, they are uh, vibration pickups, they contain basic spring mass and damper element. So, we have this spring, we have this damper and we have this mass and this mass m, k and c. This mass m is called seismic mass, call it seismic mass and you see this is complete this uh, frame and that is fixed on the surface. Now, this due to the vibration this y and it is attached to the surface, this will have some vibration behavior like x and there will be some relative of this x and y that is z, z equal to x minus y. So, the relative vibration, relative vibration of seismic mass with respect to the surface y. And so, can we measure x? We cannot measure x because it is inside the frame of the instrument 
and it is vibrating relative to the y. So, we can measure the relative displacement, relative vibration of this and that is let us say it is z and here uh, suppose we have some scale So, we can measure the z that is the relative and by measurement of z we can know we have to know what is the y. So, now if you see this and you uh, relate with the theory that I have already discussed earlier. So, it is nothing but the theory of the vibration of a single degree of freedom system. Uh, under the forced condition due to vibration of the base or vibration of the support. So, here we have uh, this uh, simple if we simplify this, this is my system and this is the support and this support has this vibration y equal to y sin omega t and so here we have z and z equal to z sin omega t minus phi and these are m, k and c. So, we have already discussed and developed this uh, the, the response, correct, uh, response uh, formula for this kind of system and if we remember uh, we have uh, this z by y, z by y equal to r square upon 1 minus r square whole square plus 2 zeta r whole square under root. So, uh, and phi equal to tan inverse 2 zeta r upon 1 minus r square. So, so the amplitude of the relative motion upon amplitude of the support motion or here is the vibrating structure is this formula r is the omega by omega n omega is the frequency here and omega n is the natural frequency that is root k by m and zeta is the damping ratio it is damping ratio and that is equal to c upon c c and c upon 2 root k m. Okay. So, all these things we have already discussed. Now, we are going to use this. Now, what is a good instrument? I mean what is our expectation that the jet that we are measuring that should precisely follow or precisely represent y. So, what do we want? We want that z should be equal to y or z by y should be equal to 1 or we can say z by y should be 1. Now, in which, which condition? So, when z by y equal to 1, we measure z and we just we uh, it means we are measuring the y. So, in which condition we will have this formula tend to z by y equal to 1. So, for this to understand this we have to uh, see the frequency response curves and let us see the frequency uh, response curves. So, these are the frequency response curves And uh, if we see the frequency response curve z by y, we see that z by y is tending to 1 because z by y is 1 when my r that is the ratio of omega by omega n is greater is tending to greater than 3. So, if r is greater than 3, Hertz, uh, r is greater than 3, 
my z is almost equal to y or z by y is equal to 1. So, it means that r square 1 minus r square whole square plus 2 zeta r whole square under root is equal to 1. So, if we want uh, a vibrometer uh, to design a vibrometer, we should select uh, values of k, values of m, value of c in such a way that the omega by omega n falls in the range greater than 3, uh, uh, omega by omega n greater than 3 and uh, that is the design criteria for the vibrometers. And when we are in this range, uh, we, we will have, uh, we can directly measure. So, my z is z sin omega t minus phi and so it is equal to y uh, sin omega t minus phi. Now, if we have just to have this r greater than 3, we must have because r is omega by omega n and it should be large. So, to have this large omega n should be small. Okay. If we want omega by omega n large, it means we must have omega n small, then only uh, for uh, most of the natural uh, force frequency we will have large value of r and omega n is equal to root k by m it means we will have m should be large so if we want m large it means my instrument will have more mass so it will be a bulky instrument and usually in we like to avoid a bulky instrument. Therefore, we have to select maybe some smaller mass, but in that case if we have we to get the relation we have to use this formula z by y equal to uh, this expression. Now, second point that I would like to discuss is the phase because we are measuring z equal to y sin omega t minus phi. So, if we have a single harmonic uh, vibration, then there is no problem because if this is my uh, So, in case of single harmonic vibration, so if this is my y, I may get my some phase lag of z, so it will be like this. So, it will have same, so this is z. So, there will be some phase lag phi. and phi equal to omega by so omega t now if we have several uh, harmonic functions sem, uh, sem, uh, the site, the excitation of the base or the structure contains may be a periodic function and a periodic function may have various higher harmonics because we know that that can be decomposed in harmonics having the 
higher terms. So, in this case, if we are for higher harmonics, my R is even greater. So, we are more precise for Z. However, there will be the phase uh, shift and phase shift will also increase. So, if my one is here, other is starting from here and so the if you combine them, they are not going to give you uh, the exact uh, resultant, because there is a phase shift for each signal. So, in that case, if we take zeta equal to 0. So, for zeta equal to 0, you can see we have the phase shift that is 180 degree. So, for zeta equal to uh, 0, we have uh, for r greater than 3, we will tend to 180 degree, uh, I mean this is 180 degree phase shift. So, the phase shift for each harmonics, even higher harmonics will be the same and they will start from the same point. And so, now let us take one uh, example. Okay, so, let us take a numerical example. So, there is a vibrometer uh, that is has a natural frequency of 4 radian per second and uh, damping factor is 0 0.2 and that is attached to a structure that performs a harmonic motion. If the difference between the maximum and the minimum recorded values is 8 mm, find the amplitude of motion of the vibrating structure when its frequency is 40 radian per second. Okay, so, we have this structure and it is vibrating with y equal to y sin omega t. And we have this our uh, seismic instrument. So, it is M, K and C and here we are measuring our jet. So, here is our scale and we are measuring jet. Now, when we are measuring z, so this is z max and this is the z mean. So, the maximum amplitude and minimum amplitude and if it is a sinusoidal, so here we have this is 0, this is t. So, z max equal to z mean and so it is said that the difference between the maximum and the minimum recorded values is 8 mm. So, it means the difference between maximum and minimum is 8 mm means 2 times z max or z max is nothing but z because if we write z equal to z sin omega t minus phi. So, it is this amplitude z that is z max 2 times z is 8 mm. So, it means that z is 4 mm and the natural frequency is 4 radian per second. So, omega n equal to 4 radian per second and zeta is 0 0.2. So, we have damping factor that is 0 0.2. Now, 
now we have to find the amplitude of motion of the vibrating structure so we have to find y uh, the capital y so we have to find capital y when the frequency is 40 radians per second so the omega is given so this is omega and omega is given as 40 radian per second so if we want to find this we have to use uh, this formula of z by y equal to r square because if we calculate omega by omega n what is omega by omega n it is 40 by 4 that is 10 so r square by 1 minus r square whole square plus 2 zeta r whole square under root So, z is uh, 4 mm, so it is in mm and y, so r is square, r is 10 is square, 1 minus 10 is square whole is square plus 2 into 0 0.2 into r, r is 10 is square under root so if we solve this we have to solve this so so this is 100 And this is 99.081 and that is equal to 1.0093. So, if we calculate y So, we will get uh, the amplitude y that is equal to 3.963 millimeter. So, here we see the, the effect of uh, this uh, parameters z, uh, zeta, uh, m and k that what we are measuring uh, that is 4 mm and the actual is 3.963 so it is close but not exact now here uh, again i would like to stress this uh, frequency response curve in this frequency response curve uh, when we design as i said that when we and the r is greater than 3 r is greater than 3 uh, v uh, z by y is closer to 1 and therefore this gives the range of the uh, range of the omega by omega n for the vibrometers so for the displacement uh, vibration pickups or seismometer uh, this is the uh, range of the omega by omega n we have to keep so uh, we we discussed uh, today uh, this uh, concept of vibrometer and we see that uh, how the theory that we discussed of the support excitations that helps us to design and understand 
the theory of vibrometers and vibrometers are the also known as seismometer or seismic instrument uh, they contain some seismic mass spring and damper and they are used to measure the displacement uh, of the uh, vibration response of and uh, uh, they can their valid frequency range omega by omega n is greater than uh, 3 and uh, so uh, I, I, I thank you for uh, this lecture and I stop here and we will uh, see you in the uh, next lecture. Thank you.